The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Money Masters. The Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the October 24th, terrific Thursday edition of the Money Masters show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I am grateful for your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential. Because Living up to our potential, folks, that's something you and I, we must master each and every day. So let's begin with what I consider to be the best set of empowering beliefs, and that's this. Beliefs, they have the power to create and the power to destroy. You and I, we have that awesome ability to take any experience of our lives and create a meaning that either disempowers us or one that can literally save our lives and empower us to places we never even dreamed or dreamed of, think of it like this. There's only one thing that you can control in life, the meaning that you give something. That's the beauty of the markets we trade. We've got bulls, we've got bears, one that sees an event as a selling opportunity, one as a buying opportunity. Our beliefs, your beliefs, the meaning that we give to events, statements, criticisms, you name it. We are the ones in control of that meaning. Pretty cool when you really think about it. Because we, whatever it is, whatever it is, what we can or cannot do, folks, what we consider possible or impossible, really, it is rarely a function of our capabilities. It is more a function of our beliefs about who we are. And that matters because all of our breakthroughs begin with a change in beliefs. So, how do we change? I found the most effective way to change that is to get our brain to associate massive pain to the old disempowering belief. We must believe at the deepest level that our disempowering belief has cost us in our past, and if we continue, it'll cost us right now, right here today, and ultimately will only bring us pain in the future. Sometimes knowing what we don't want is just as important as knowing what we do, and I think both are really key because once we rid ourselves of our disempowering beliefs, then we must associate tremendous pleasure to the idea of adopting a new empowering belief system. And lastly, we must know that at any moment, a decision that we make can and will change the course of our life forever. The very next person we stand behind in line or sit next to on an airplane, the very next phone call, that we make or receive, the next movie we see or the book we read or the page that we turn, any one of these could be the single event that causes those floodgates to open. And all the things we've been waiting for will fall into place. I love that set of belief systems. Let's go check out these markets. Let's go see what we can believe about this move out here. The Dow is the leader in the clubhouse. It's up nearly four-tenths of a percent. It's up 58 points. You got the S&P up one tenth of percent. That's the struggling index here as we speak this morning, up about two points at 1747. Composite up seven, up about two tenths of a percent. The more this morning, trading out at 3915. Russell 2000 up a point and a half. Apple down 44 cents. Microsoft up 12 ticks. Google up about three bucks right now, trading out at 1034. To the upside, pre Precision Cast Parts, killing it this morning. It's up $12.60, up 5%. Metadata Solutions, MDSO, that's up about 11% here. You've got Shire PLC, SHPG, that's up 9%, up 11 bucks and change. McKesson Corp, up $7, up about 5%. Equinix, up 3%, that's $5. Texas Capital Bank, up 5 bucks. Generac Holdings, GNRC, they're up $5. ITT Educational Services, up Five bucks. Tractor Supply up four sixty. Agnico Eagle up nice seventeen percent this morning. That is up four dollars and thirty eight cents. Uh, you've got uh, Wind Resorts up about uh, four bucks. Uh, to the downside here, we've got the uh, World Acceptance Corp. That's trading down about eleven dollars off ten percent. You've got Arctic Cat 
ACAT, that's down 16%. O'Reilly Automotive up 7%. That's nearly $9.50. Cameron International, C-A-M, that's off about 11%, down $6 and change. Tim, Timken, T-K-R is its ticker symbol. That's trading down about 10%. Akamai down 11% right now. Uh, you've got uh, Avalon Bay Communities, that's down 4%. Uh, Group 1 Automotive off 7 Our call number, 877 877- Nine two seven six six four eight. Let's start off. Let's take a look at the VIX index out here. We can see the VIX index. It is below the fifty-day exponential moving average. What does that do? That gives the uh, oomph. That gives the power. It gives the energy. As long as the uh, VIX is below the fifty-day exponential moving average, that gives it the power. That's where you see either sideways to bullish runs inside of a uh, marketplace. Right now, it's trading at thirteen forty-seven. The fifty-day is at a price of 1513. Let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange right now up 21 points, up two tenths of a percent out here. Uh, net advancing issues about 331. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange, what it did was it completed in essence a one to one, A to B equals CD. It did that three trading sessions ago on October the 22nd as it got up to a high of 1083. The actual one to one, A to B equals CD, 1099. Also ran into the top of a shorter-term rising price channel out there. A little bit of a pullback yesterday, but was really on light declining issues out there. In fact, I think we got more advancing issues so far today than we did on the pullback uh, yesterday. What does this set up? It really sets up a move to the larger A to B equals CD, which inside the New York Stock Exchange should be the 10-122 level. But what we do know here about the New York Stock Exchange, and let me just go over to a different uh, chart here. Let's go over and take a look at the weekly chart. But the weekly chart is showing us, let me back this off just a bit, Thought I had the line drawn out here. I don't have a line drawn in the sand, but we're going to we're going to make sure. Well, maybe I did have it out there. And it's this black line. The number. Let's just put the number out here. Uh, ten one sixty three twenty four. So let me move over here. Ten one sixty three twenty four. Ten one sixty three point twenty four. You can see you're trading below, but we want to watch this here because if the New York Stock Exchange can push higher. Can close inside of 10163.24 on the weekly basis. That takes you inside of its swing time, if its swing point from 2007, the October swing point from 2007. In the monthly chart, we are already trading inside that. And so it's saying on a monthly basis that the New York Stock Exchange wants to go test its highs. If we go take a look at the monthly chart out here, that's easy to see. You can see the low of that swing point. We actually hit it last month. We're inside it now. We're inside it with some conviction. That says the high of 10387 is really what the New York Stock Exchange wants to go up and test and tag. Now, whether or not it gets up above that level, just as all the other indexes are, boy, that will really be the sign of a major uh, bull market out here as it gets above its swing points as well. So we'll take things one step at a time, but right now, the monthly chart for the New York Stock Exchange is inside that uh, swing point. No rejection as we speak. Let's go take a look at the S&P 500, see what it is doing. It's trading out at 1748.90. We know that this had completed the one-to-one, -one, the smaller one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. The smaller pattern was the one coming off of the August 28th low up to the high on uh, September 19th and the pullback down on October the 9th. That price projection was 17. 49.17. We got to 17.59.33 yesterday. Really just a sideways day. No real damage done inside of the uh, S&P 500. Uh, so uh, what you're looking for as far as additional breakout, additional follow through inside of the S&P is a close above 17.59.33. That's what will set up the move to 17.76. Here's where you're going to have a convergence of two A to B equals CD patterns. One on the shorter term and the other on the longer the longer meaning coming back to the June 24th level, up to the August uh, second high, down to the uh, lows on August 28th, and you'll have two A B equals C D patterns that both complete in that 1776 range. I suspect that is where the S and P 500 wants to head to. Now, the leader in the clubhouse percentage-wise, playing a little catch-up ball here, is the uh, Dow. It's up 64 points this morning. The uh, Dow here is trying to get above that point seven eight six retracement, which is right around the fifteen four ninety seven level. We hit that area, closed below it. That was on uh, today's what Thursday. That was on Tuesday that we did that. Once you get above, 
Really, once you close about fifteen four ninety seven, that's what's going to set up a, a move. And really, the move is going to be to fifteen seven zero nine. There's your thousand point, that yellow shaded area. That's your one thousand point consolidation area, and that is what we really want to be watching inside of the weak link, so 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 called weak link inside the marketplace. Because if we get a close above that, and what's going to be really key is how the Dow is coming into that swing point from September 18th. If it's coming in there with conviction, meaning with volume, volume, wide price spread, and we get above that 15,709 area, 1,000 points, that sets up 16,600, 16,700, somewhere right around there. So we're going to want to pay close attention to the Dow as those levels are approached. Russell 2000, that is trading up about uh, two and a half points, about two quarters of a percent here uh, this morning. Uh, what the Russell 2000 did yesterday was just came back and tested the bottom of its most recent breakout session, which was October 18th low, 1105.91. Yesterday got down to 1105.35, rejected that area, did it on lighter volume. That sets up its run to the 1130-ish range, maybe 1138 as its next target that is on the Russell 2000. Inside the composite here is going to be the real key of what the market is going to do. Why do I say that? Because it's in the composite, which has truly been the strong hands inside of the marketplace. It did create a bearish reversal signal that we have to be paying attention to. Now, not so much from a candlestick standpoint, so more of a, uh, more of a, instead of a, uh, uh, instead of a, a Japanese, this is more of a, a Western-type candlestick. This is a key reversal session. So what is key about that now is the price high of 39.47.67. If the composite closes above that level, number one, it'll push aside this little obstacle that is in its way. And it is an obstacle at this stage. We want to be paying close attention to it because we did see some foul through yesterday, albeit uh, you know, very subtle, but we did see a lower close yesterday. So that means we must be paying attention to what's going on inside of the strong hands. The weak hands, we took a look at that. That's just trying to play a little catch-up once you get back up to the top of its consolidation zone out here. But what's also going to be key with regard to where these markets are going to head to, I think we'll get information both from the Dow as well as from the composite. So right now, all things look okay. Nothing looks really great here. It won't begin to look great until you see it close above 39.47.67 until it takes out that key reversal session. You're at 39.17 right now, so that's another 30 points to the uh, north here. If you see that by the end of the day, then it's all things are clear, full steam ahead inside of the marketplace. Now, the other place that we can pay attention to also happens to be the NDX 100. Really the same setup. Now, this completed the uh, one-to-one, -one, a smaller one-to-one, -one, and a larger one-to-one, -one, A to B equals CD. The larger A to B equals CD inside the NDX 100, and that's the one-to-one, -one, took us from the June 24th low to a high on August 13th, about a .382 retracement into August 27th. It really says that it wants to move up to about 34, 34, 34, 65, but it's got a clear, it's key reversal session from Tuesday as well. We'll be right back, folks. Wednesday, October 30th at 6.30 p.m., Andy Hecht has a special live online workshop for his subscribers to his weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, called A Roadmap That All Investors Should Use But Most Don't. During this hour-long live webinar, Andy will teach you how to use free and readily available market data to calculate the future expected price range for any asset. It's a simple yet powerful method that every investor should have in their toolbox. The best part is that you can attend this live online workshop, which will be archived, by simply signing up for a 30-day free trial to Andy's newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. And this is the last month to lock in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. This price will be going up by over 25% come November, so now is the perfect time to get in on the action. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. That Dow's up 62 right now. S&P is up uh, 3. And you talk about a little gold mine out here. Agnico Eagle Mines up uh, about 17% as we speak, up $4.56 out here. Let's check in on this equity. They were out with uh, earnings before the Abel. Uh, their Q3 net income, $47 million versus, what, 100 and Come on, show up on my screen here. Come on. Oh, man, I hate when that does that. There we go. Uh, Forty-seven million versus one hundred and six million. That was the net income number. I don't see the revenues here from their mine. There we go. Revenues from the mining operations: four hundred forty-four million versus five thirty-five. But this thing is truly off to the uh, races. And take a look at the volume behind it. Now this thing had a. Um, Big move down here, as did most of the mining equities. This was on the trading session of September 20th out here. 5.6 million shares. It's going to blow that number away here because we've only been trading for, what, just under an hour. It's already done 2.5 million shares in one hour's time versus the downdraft session, which had 5.6 million shares. That sets up it's going to now head into the swing point, and it's moving into the swing point, its next swing point, I should say, from August 20th, 7th. Now that only has two and a half million shares, the low of which is thirty one fourteen. The high is thirty three ninety two. Hasn't reached that level yet today, but if it does close inside thirty one fourteen, uh so far the interest session high in this thing has been thirty fifty eight. So that's a, a doable that's a doable outcome, a doable objective here for Agnico Eagle. If it closes inside there with volume, 
maybe this thing's going to go ahead and take out the August 28th, uh, August 27th, I should say, swing point high out there. So a nice, a nice morning for Agnico Eagle. AEM is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's take a look at some of these other equities here that are moving and grooving in the marketplace. To the downside now, you've got World Acceptance Corp. That's the leader in the clubhouse. That's up $12. They were also out with the numbers. Uh, let's go ch see what they are trading down into. WRLD is the uh, ticker symbol there. Oh, I've got to hit the right ticker symbol. Give me a moment here. WRLD. It's trading off 11%, gapping down with some volume coming into the last sign of strength that it had. had a decent sign of strength uh, just recently a couple of weeks ago on the trading session here of uh, October the uh, 1st. It was up with uh, 378,000 shares but it's gapping down. You've got some volume off of the highs for sure. 168,000 shares so you've got some volume. This says that you've, yeah, this equity is very likely to pull all the way back into these swing point lows back here on July the 5th. That was uh, 694,000 shares in the price range of 87 to about 77 bucks and change out there that is on World Acceptance Corp. Let's take a look and see what they reported here numbers-wise, see if I can get that to pop up on my screen. Come on, I'm just hovering above it. Hmm. There we go. Revenue is $149 million versus $139, and net income $21.5 versus $22 million from the prior year out there. Uh, let's take a look at Netflix. Netflix is trading down just a, a tad here this morning. Let's go see what it is doing. No, I don't want to do that. Give me a moment here, folks. My apologies. NFL X is the uh, ticker symbol, obviously. Uh, so not uh, nothing huge out here. Now we saw big key reversal session inside of this equity, bearish engulfing candle, the whole thing. This was on October the uh, 22nd. Uh, that was the day that Carl Icahn was selling 3 or 4 million shares. He had 25 million shares of traded hands that day. Yesterday, a little bit of a bounce higher on 8.3 million shares, which overall was not too bad from a share volume standpoint. It made a high with 9 million shares a couple of days uh, earlier. So far, the pullback this morning on 1.3 million shares out there. Maybe Carl is selling some more of uh, Netflix up here at these uh, highs at 325 bucks. I don't believe he has to file anything any longer. I think his holdings are now down below the 5% uh, number out there. I saw some things uh, buzzing across my screen with regard to Carl and Apple. I didn't get a chance to see what it all said, but let's go check in on some of these core holdings. Let's go see what Apple is doing. Apple also had a key reversal session a couple of days ago. Yesterday, somewhat erasing that, and really today I would say similar type movement. So whatever was it, Carl put out there today doesn't seem to be impacting the stock to the negative side. What Apple has done, it's confirmed an A to B equals CD to the upside. It did that by on the trading session of October 22nd, had 19 million shares, getting up over a B point with 18 million shares. 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, says 572 out there, with Apple still being such a large weight and inside the uh, Qs, inside the NDX 100, says that we ought to see that key reversal session uh, get uh, wiped away. Hasn't occurred yet. The first signal probably comes from Apple, and that would be with a close of about 528.45. Right now it's trading at 524.84. So just a dollar to go before it would give a, a signal that ah, I'll go ahead and remove that little impediment, that little obstacle, that key reversal session. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is up 49. S&P is up one point right now. The uh, NASDAQ, that's up seven. Uh, Russell 2000 up a couple of points out here we've got gold up uh, 10 bucks silver up 11 pennies light sweet crude back 65 uh, cents out here a uh, king dollar back about uh, six ticks trade out at 79 uh, 26 out here let's continue looking at some of these core stocks in fact i'm going to switch over into a, a tab here it's a little off it's not on the screen here i want to see what's going on inside the uh, dow here dow leader in the clubhouse now leading the way to the downside is boeing we'll take a look at boeing i believe that's at all-time highs out here uh, leading to the upside, you've got Home Depot. That's up a buck five. Travelers up seventy-seven cents. Exxon Mobil up sixty-four. Three M up fifty-eight cents. IBM up fifty-three cents out here. So it looks like about uh, a little more than half of the issues are in the uh, green out here. Big, big ones to the downside again. Boeing, AT and T's up seventy-three cents. United Health Group, that's down seventy-two cents. J.P. Morgan is off forty-eight cents out here. Uh, let's take a look at. Uh, Let's take a look at J.P. Morgan. Now, J.P. Morgan, uh, this year at a, a big bearish golfing uh, candle, the trading session. This has acted. Has this act? No, it has not acted as resistance. The uh, trading session of October the twenty uh, second. But the back off here came down with twenty one million shares yesterday. Uh, today, so far, in an hour's worth of trading, about four million shares. So volume is uh, about similar to uh, yesterday's uh, volume out here. Let's take a look at its retracement so far. Really, a, a trading range now. The low of which, in the, in the case of J.P. Morgan, is down at the $50.11 range. We can see that area 
has been tested on uh, three separate occasions. Looks like maybe it's going to go ahead and uh, pull back and test that area again. So you're looking at the lows of about $50.06. If that area is broken, uh, that would be a uh, probably setting up an A to B equals CD down. If it can be broken with uh, more than 39 million shares, I'm uh, not saying that's what's going to happen, but that's the pattern that would be set up if it can break through that important support level. That would then take it down to about the 4797 area. That's on J.P. Morgan, but that's not looking bullish. It's really a sideways trading range out there. We take a look at IBM out here. Uh, IBM right now today. So IBM on the daily chart, we take a look at my screen. Interesting. This thing finally broke its uh, descending price channel out here, and it did it. With the volume, did it in a big way. Now, you know how we talk about when you break a price channel that uh, what will happen at some point in time, what often happens is price is going to try to get back inside it. So whether it's a break up, up to the upside or to the downside. Now, in the case of IBM, interestingly enough, broke through that price channel on October 17. Did it with a total volume of 22 million shares. Now, what's interesting as we take a look at the stock chart, I'll blow it up on my screen uh, you can see that uh, it has gapped up. Well, did it gap up? Yeah, a slight gap up uh, this morning. And so far, what's acted as resistance is the bottom of that uh, price channel. Now, no, no volume inside the equity this morning, 1.1 million shares. No volume when you compare it to the uh, breakdown with 22 million shares out here. But what will be interesting is to see what happens with IBM. If IBM can get back inside that descending price channel, that will then at least set up a move to come back and... Well, I would say come back and fill the gap, certainly. And that gap uh, would be, uh, you could use really the, the easier gap is the October 9th low. That's at 179.10. But more likely, if it gets inside that descending price channel, would set up a, a move into probably the 181 level, the larger 30-point consolidation level that it uh, broke out of. But first, the hurdle that is inside of IBM's way happens to be that blue diagonal line if you're watching us on uh, Tiger TV. If you're listening on the radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, remember you can always catch the live stream of this show by going to the homepage of tfnn.com. On the right-hand side, you will see a uh, button up the right-hand side, three little smartphones. Click on that. If you want to set up this price channel for yourself, what I would use is I would use the close of the session from March the 4th. That price level is 205.19. Uh, the next touch points that I would uh, use, I'd go ahead and use the uh, close of June 28th. That close out there is 191.11. That'll go ahead and set up your descending, the lower portion of your descending price channel. On the upper side, in case you don't have a tool for both and you want to draw it in, use the close, use the open, I should say, of April the 3rd. That open was at 214.32. And then I would use the uh, close of the session from May 21st. That close at 208.65. That'll go ahead and anchor the uh, top portion of the uh, descending price channel. So IBM trying to get back inside of that. Let's go take a look here at Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil is uh, going to go ahead and try to bust it to the upside. It couldn't bust it to the downside of its seven point trading range. You can see it tested that level. Uh, the last test of swing points was the swing point from April 18th. That had 14 million shares. The test on the way down was with 13 million shares. Not enough to uh, bust it down. Now what it's going to at least do here, it's going to at least try to get up, and it's uh, testing right now. The swing point high happens to be September 18th. Hey, how about that? No uh, uh, no kidding. September 18th is a swing point we take a look at for the most. September 18th, September 19th for each of the indexes. So Exxon Mobil right now is in, or trying to get inside the uh, swing point, the low of which is 89.87. It's at 88.25. No, I'm sorry. 88.37. So the low of that swing point from uh, the uh, September 18th, 88.37, it's at 88.25. Now the volume on that swing is 15 million shares. This morning, what ExxonMobil has done, it's gapped up, and it's done volume of 3.5 million shares. So ExxonMobil, 3.5 million shares. We've been trading for about an hour and if you do the volume, uh, you know, straight line volume on it, it actually has coming into that swing point with volume. So uh, that says that ExxonMobil ought to go test the high, 89.87. If it can get above that with volume, well, it'll go all the way back up to the top portion of this consolidation zone, and it'll send it all the way back to about the $93 range. Now, that'll be positive for the S&P 500. That'll be positive for the energy sector. In fact, we'll take a look at the uh, energy sector 
Uh, we'll go take a look at the uh, uh, at all the sectors inside the S and P 500. See if we can poke around and, and see what we have out there. But an Exxon Mobil having a decent trading session today, and it looks like it's going to get back inside that swing point. So it looks like it's going to test 89, 87 out there over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, Microsoft. Let's go see what Microsoft is uh, doing out here. Microsoft uh, has got the just really a consolidation zone that it's trading into. It has significant resistance at 35, 20. And it's got a pretty darn good PDG support at the low of that July 19th session, which is 3102. So 3102 to uh, 35. So it's got a four-point consolidation range. In fact, we ought to just go ahead and draw that in on the uh, chart here so that I don't have to uh, do that in the uh, future. And we'll just go ahead and write in that it's in a four-point. Was it four? Four or five-point. Let me see here. What's the low? 30. Uh, uh, 30. Let me do this. Sorry about that. Uh, thirty-one ten. Yeah. So it's a no. That's the man. My eyes are my eyes aren't. Yeah. Thirty-one bucks. So four-point trading range out there. Let's see if we can do it now. There we go. Four dollars. Four-point trading range. Now, if I could only spell right, that would make things a little bit easier there. Okay. So we got four-point trading range. Let's see what else I've got inside. Well, we've got Intel. Let's go take a look at Intel. See what it is doing. The uh, semiconductors. Getting hit pretty hard over the last couple of days. Uh, Intel uh, took out a, a B point. Let's see, 28 million shares. It took out that B point with 29 million shares. So it looks like a complex A to B equals CD up that is setting inside of uh, Intel. Yesterday's pullback. Eh, yesterday's pullback was. Well, let me make sure I got all the volume here. My apology. Let me update this chart here. There we go. Yesterday's pullback was on uh, 31 million shares. So it takes out a B point with 29 million. Pulls back yesterday with 31 million shares out here. I'd have to say really a complex A to B equals C D structure could be in the making here for Intel 2466. Let's actually go take a look at the SOX. That had been traveling in a consolidation. Let's see if it's still outside of that consolidation or if the last couple of days brought things back into the lower part of its range out here. Let's go see. Yeah, it uh, it most certainly did. So let me just uh, update this, make sure I've got all the active data. So it's trading really it it broke out of the consolidation uh, zone did it here on October the uh, 10th that was a 43 point consolidation and then what it did here yesterday gap down into the consolidation zone right now it's just testing again the top of that uh, range out here so I would have to say kind of a draw at this stage with the move down that we see inside of uh, uh, with volume you had Texas Instruments pulling back with volume you had Intel pulling back with volume and you're into the bottom part of the, uh, or you're into the top portion of the uh, consolidation zone. That is in the uh, SOX out there. Okay, I said we would go take a look at the ETF structures. So oh, it's Thursday. So with it being Thursday, should we look at the daily or should we look at the weekly? Um, let's look at the daily. Tomorrow we'll try to uh, look at the uh, weekly. How about that? So let's go take a look at the uh, weekly. Let's look at the XLK out here. And the XLK Technology sector, number one waiting inside the uh, structure. The XLK also had a key reversal session yesterday. Is that right? Oh. No, two days ago. There we go. So it had a key. So it's got some resistance. It needs to get above the level of 33.57 to remove that obstacle out of the way and had uh, some big volume out there on that trading session. So it's trading inside it right now. At a minimum, we should see a test of 33.57. More likely, what we would see is a move up to 33.82. That's your one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, and that is on the technology sector, the XLK, inside the S&P 500. Uh, let's go take a look at the XLY. We're going to look at each of uh, these out here. Uh, give me just a, a moment here. The uh, XLY uh, is the uh, uh, consumer, what is that, the consumer discretionary? Uh, yeah, it's consumer discretionary. Now, it has a, a B point here, if an A to B equals CD. That was 60.75, August the uh, 2nd, and that had volume here of uh, 3.7 million shares. That was taken out with volume on the trading session of September 18th. So a little complex A to B equals CD that is formed out here as well. Uh, if we take a look at another A to B equals CD pattern, let's see if this one was taken out with uh, volume. That would be the one. Uh, from the uh, uh, start, we would start now at the August 28th low, the uh, high, the B point, September 19th, and that would be at a price level of 61.75, 6.3 million shares. Let's see if that was taken out with volume. 
5.2 million shares. So that's not been taken out with volume. You see how this has made the one to one. It actually did it yesterday. But it does look like the consumer discretionary sector wants to trade up to about $64.12. No bearish, no reversal signals or anything. Let me just make sure this chart is updated. There we go. No, no real. Well, it did have a, a bear separating line yesterday, but that has been erased with today's action. That is in the XLY. Let's take a look at the utility sector, XLU out here. I can see I need to update each of these charts. I don't know why the system isn't doing that, but, but I can do it. So a little shooting star yesterday. That sets up some uh, resistance here. If we take a look at uh, this, the resistance really was established uh, just simply by a swing point out here, not a bearish reversal sign most recently, which was September 19th. So that makes sense. So volume here inside of the September 19th session was 20 million shares. It was approached with 19 million shares, not too shabby, two trading sessions ago. Yesterday, a little shooting star with 14 million shares. So if, in fact, and today you got a bearish engulfing candle. So the utility sector here is suggesting that maybe this is going to try to move back down to its lows. Looks like a little bit of a uh, short-term consolidation uh, pattern out here, but you've got now two reversal signals at a normal area of resistance, which was that swing point from September the ninth out there. In order for that to be blown away, you need to see it close above the shooting star candle from yesterday. That price is thirty nine twenty nine. That's on the XLU, the utility sector. If we take a look at the XLV, that is the health sector. Let's take a look at its A to B equals C to up. See if it has uh, confirmed that. Your B point on this is going to be August first. That had eight point seven million shares. You moved above it with six point eight the first time. The next time, eight point eight million shares. So you do have a 8.8 versus 8.7. So you do have a confirmed A to B <clears throat> equals CD inside of uh, the health sector. Let's go take a look at the, I'll give you what the A point was here. The A point being the trading session from June 24th, the B point being that uh, August 1st level. One to one, A to B equals CD is 53.88. Right now it's trading at 52.82. So about a buck fifty to the upside is what it looks like its next target is. And that, again, was the health sector, XLV. Let's take a look at the XLP. That is the uh, just that XLP is the, uh, uh, the uh, consumer staples, right? Consumer staples, uh, yeah, pretty sure that's the consumer staples area. This has been traveling, <coughs> excuse me, in a three-point consolidation. Let me change the color on this. makes it a little bit easier to see if you're looking in. And so this has been a three-point consolidation that it's trying to, well, alt seven. Let me just make sure I got all the active data. So it's trying to take that level out right now. Now, the last time up here, there was a swing point from May 28th. And May 28th swing point had volume of 15 million shares. Now, you're trading inside it right now, and you came into it with 9 million shares and yesterday 8.8. .8. So not, uh, not enough volume here. If it can't take out, uh, now, you want to see a failure of this area, which would mean getting above 42.19, closing back below it with less than 15 million shares. If it can't bust it up, then what it looks like this uh, uh, consumer staples uh, sector might do is try to bust it down. It's been a nice three-point consolidation zone. You can see how it has traveled within that. On the other hand, if it can uh, close above the uh, trading session of 42.19, even if it is on light volume, then that would not be your short uh, setup out there. And that's in the XLP. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow is up uh, 65 points. S&P is up 2.5. We'll be right back. Profits and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So we got MasterCard jumping into the fray here this morning. They're up 12 bucks in the change. Uh, metadata Solutions, MDSO. That's up 11%. Precision cast parts up 4.5% to the downside. World Acceptance Corp. That's off 10% off 10 bucks. O'Reilly Automotive down nine and a half dollars out here i uh, just to finish off the uh sectors with inside the s p 500 we can see we're taking a look at the uh uh the energy sector the xle uh this had completed a one-to-one a, -to -one a to b equals cd the uh, price projection on that was 87.72 got up to a price point of 87.59 did that two trading sessions ago and then we had a, a move down yesterday gap down uh with some uh decent volume 16 made the high with 14 million shares uh, moved down yesterday with 16 million shares. So far today, uh, it has made that low of 85.21, 85.19 being the debt get bounce, the 0 .382 retracement of the uh, last move up off of October 9th. It's low up to the high that was put in uh, two trading sessions ago on October the uh, 22nd out there. So completing that A to B equals CD. Uh, if this is, this could be just setting up, well, 
the volume, unfortunately, the volume yesterday was pulling back with, uh, you'd like to see lower, lighter volume, not higher volume as it's pulling back here. So far today, though, uh, 2.8 million shares, uh, six, uh, about, uh, man, that's still too much volume on its uh, pullback here. That's inside the energy sector. That's with ExxonMobil being the uh, lead waiting inside the uh, energy sector, uh, moving up, moving up uh, nicely here. Let's take a look at uh, Chevron, CBX. I think that's number two or number three. Let's see what Chevron is doing out here today. Chevron, uh, not nothing uh, nothing really nasty with inside Chevron, so it must be uh, many of the other uh, juniors that uh, don't have the waiting structure. I guess Schlumberger, I don't know how Schlumberger. In any event, let's take a look here at the... Uh, the financial sector. We were looking at J.P. Morgan a bit earlier. Uh, the uh, you know the financial sector here. What it did took out the single most uh, bearish reversal signal that you can get. It was really on the weekly chart, which was a uh, which was a uh, abandoned baby uh, top out there, a Doji abandoned baby top. Those are very difficult to make, uh, but those highs were taken out. Uh, as it was making a high, it was doing it with 53 million shares, 41, 53 million. The uh, pullback, let me make sure I got the correct date out here. There we go. So the pullback yesterday on 35 million shares. So it was moving up with 53, pulling back yesterday with 35. Uh, today so far it's done 7.6 million shares. So the financial sector, which one time looked to be a pretty uh, weak out here, by the mere fact that it was able to take out that uh, island reversal on the daily chart, it was an island reversal uh, pattern, it was an island reversal on the weekly as well, uh, says that there's actually some pretty decent uh, legs inside of the uh, at, of the energy sector of the uh, XLF what could this do on any kind of really large move to the upside well it could run all the way up to the top of its uh, price channel line out here this is the channel going back from November the uh, 16th out there so what is it that we need to be taking a look at well today i'd say the uh, focus here is really going to be the dow and the uh, composite i'd say paying attention to the ndx and the composite is uh, key if, in fact, you see the uh, NASDAQ composite get above 39.47, that will remove that impediment of that key reversal session from two trading sessions ago inside of the NDX 100. The uh, number you're looking at here is going to be the trading session from August, uh, I'm sorry, from October 22nd as well, and 33.84 is the uh, number. The next thing that you're going to be paying attention to is going to be the uh, Dow, which is in this uh, consolidation. If it closes above, uh, the uh, we'll, we'll say the October 22nd swing point as well. If it can close above 15,518, that's what's going to set up a, a run to the top of this 1,000 point consolidation zone that it has been traveling in. That says it should test the 15,709 level. It is terrific Thursday, folks. Stay tuned. You've got two hours of Mr. Basil Chapman. He's filling in for Larry today from 12 to 1 as well. Then we've got Daryl Martin, David White, Andy Heck, and the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6. Have a great Thursday, folks. Look forward to seeing you in the morning. Basil Chapman has just announced that he will be hosting a one-day online master trader class. Friday, November 8th, Basil Chapman will teach you the essential fundamentals he uses when trading the market with his Chapman Wave methodology. Included in this full-day online master trader class is one month of Basil's daily newsletter service, The Opening Call, a $128 value, as well as a copy of his CD book, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology, which usually sells for $249. Join Basil Chapman for this powerful one-day online master trader class Friday, November 8th, which will be archived if you can't attend live, where he'll give you a complete understanding of the Chapman Wave methodology and how to apply it to profitably trade any market in any time frame. For all the details and to reserve your spot while taking advantage of early bird pricing and saving $200 off the regular price, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.